Russians. Today, Vladimir Putin put his nuclear deterrent forces on high alert. A move a senior U.S. defense official says will only make this conflict much more dangerous. New satellite images show a large convoy of Russian forces moving in the direction of Ukraine's capital. Citizens arming themselves to fend off the Russians as the majority of Kyiv's two and a half million residents remain in place. Heavy fighting in the country's second largest city of Kharkiv. The resistance holding these images from social media. Today, the president of Ukraine says a Ukrainian delegation will go to the border of Belarus tomorrow to meet with Russian negotiators, though he warns the talks likely will not succeed. And people around the world showing their support for Ukraine. More than 100,000 rallied in Berlin. Ukraine accusing Russia of war crimes, saying 352 civilians have been killed, including 14 children. We have team coverage on the ground tonight. ABC's senior foreign correspondent Ian Panel leads us off tonight from Kyiv. Tonight, more Russian troops advancing into Ukraine, facing fierce resistance as Vladimir Putin raises the stakes even higher. The Russian president ordering his strategic nuclear defense forces onto heightened alert, claiming his country's under threat by NATO, a claim refuted by the United States. This is really a pattern that we've seen from President Putin through the course of this conflict, which is uh, manufacturing threats that don't exist in order to justify further aggression. And the global community and the American people should look at it through that prism. A senior U.S. defense official calling Putin's move an unnecessary and escalatory step, warning he's putting at play forces that could make things much, much more dangerous. That may seem hard to imagine for Ukrainians facing another night of bombardment. In the early hours of the morning, our team capturing this video, a massive fire lighting up the night sky. A Russian missile striking an oil refinery near the capital. But the heaviest fighting today reported in the country's second largest city, Kharkiv, close to the Russian border. Videos posted to social media capturing street skirmishes. The Ukrainian government releasing these images claiming to show a Russian convoy entering the city. Then an apparent victory. Russian vehicles left burning, Ukrainian defense forces with their yellow armbands picking through the debris. A Pentagon official saying the Ukrainian resistance has been quite creative in finding ways to attack columns. But also warning, Russia has a very significant amount of combat power still available in and out of the country. New satellite images showing a massive column of ground forces heading in the direction of Kyiv. Stretching more than three miles long, it contains hundreds of military vehicles. This city, this country, is on a total war footing. We filmed civilians and soldiers queuing for weapons. Tens of thousands have signed up. What we're seeing today are civilians taking up arms to try and defend their city of Kyiv. Let's just follow them a second. We're seeing people with anti-tank weapons, Kalashnikovs are getting them from the police station. And these are men, some of them in their 50s, some just out of their teens, ready to stand and fight and defend. Vladimir's a 50-year-old retired policeman. He says, I could relax, go for a walk in the park with my grandson, but Putin's decided I shouldn't do that, that my family shouldn't live, so it means we'll show him what Ukraine means. The U.S. bolstering Ukraine with hundreds of millions of dollars of military aid and weapons. And for the first time, the European Union financing the purchase and delivery of weapons to a country that's under attack. Many of Ukraine's citizens sheltering underground. New video showing patients from a children's hospital in a makeshift bomb shelter. This mother comforting her young child saying, we live here now, this is our house. Other families are being caught in the attacks. The number of civilian casualties rising. This building reduced to rubble in the firefighting. The Ukrainian emergency services searching for survivors, finding four dead bodies. Ukraine's President Volodymyr Zelensky defiant, now sending a delegation to the Belarus border to attempt to negotiate an end to this bloody conflict. According to the government, 352 civilians have died, 14 of them children. But Zelensky warning the talks will likely fail, saying, let's try so that no citizen of Ukraine would have any doubt that I didn't try to stop the war when there was even a small chance. Lesia Orobet's husband has gone off to the war, but she decided she too must fight for Kyiv 
and says she isn't fooled by Putin's offers of peace. We want to make sure that uh, the world knows that Russia's main target is right now to take the city. The Ukrainian people ready to fight. Let's get right to Ian in Kiev for us tonight. Ian, you've been in the capital since the beginning of the Russian offensive. Could Vladimir Putin have expected this level of resistance from Ukraine? Yeah, I mean, I think if Putin had thought that the government and army here would collapse quickly, then he's underestimated his enemy. But this is likely far from over. And if Russia's tactics aren't working, then the fear is that Putin could use even greater brute force, unleashing more indiscriminate artillery and airstrikes. But what the relatively slow pace of this invasion has done, though, I think, is allowed the Ukrainian resistance to grow in confidence and capability. The chances are that time is not on Putin's side. Lindsay?